Hi, I'm John Perkis. Welcome to part four of my entire board game collection where I'm going through the last remaining games that I haven't talked about yet. Is there any games in the collection that you think should be here that you think are missing? Let me know in the comments. This was a goal that I reached on my Patreon campaign, so thank you so much to everyone for your support. If you'd like to help me reach the next two goals of making a video about how I got into board games and another song, go to patreon.com forward slash actualol to support. Right, let's get on with it. Starting at the top, we've got Word Slam, which is a party game that I love. I've talked about this in a couple of videos. The reason it's at the top is because it's got one of those annoying inserts that means that everything falls out if you put it up sideways. Uh, this is a team game where you're trying to get your team to guess the same word as the other team, but you're racing against them and you're, play you're using these um, generic ad adjectives and verbs and things to get stuff across. A bit like concept. Love it. It's uh, really got a great pace to it. Great family game. Monopoly, this is a terrible game. Uh, I have done a, uh, a video about why you should never play Monopoly. This is actually my girlfriend's copy. It's this uh, sort of old-timey wooden version and she doesn't want to sell it, but I think we should because we've literally never played it. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that and I sort of may be keeping it to occasionally feature in a video. Right, here we've got uh, the Paco games. Uh, so I've got all of the Paco games games, which if you don't know them, are these tiny little chewing gum box sized card games. And so there was two different Kickstarters and I did the second one and got all the games. And there's a whole bunch in here. Let's see if I can try and go through them quickly. I would say that some of these games are fun to um, take out because they just are tiny, you can fit them in a pocket, um, but they don't necessarily rival my favorite travel card games or something like Quinto, but they are, some of them are worth playing. So we've got Lie, this is very much like Liar's Dice, uh, but in a card game. Uh, I think that one's okay. Gem is a auction game, so you're bidding on gems. I quite like this one, it's quite thinky. So, I haven't played. I understand it's a Mancala inspired game, so I can't tell you about that. It's got cute garden artwork. Taj is a... It's called a Rug of War. I can't remember how it plays, but I remember quite liking this one. Orc is a two-player only game, uh, sort of an area control thing. I quite enjoyed this one as well. Box. This is a pattern building thing. You've got a hidden color objective. Um, and it creates these big grids of dots, and this one is far too hard to follow. It's just, I wouldn't recommend that one at all. Rum, this is kind of a bit like rummy. Uh, it's got really cute artwork. Um, you're collecting bottles of rum. Um, yeah, just sort of set collection thing. It's, uh, it's quite nice. Fly, this is a dexterity game where you are dropping a fly swatter onto a tablecloth covered in flies, and you're trying to kill the flies. It's kind of cute to play once, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, so that is the first pack. And then hopefully these are the other ones. They might be elsewhere. We've got Sh. This is a cooperative word building game. This is quite a clever idea. You've got letter cards, you can't communicate, and you're trying to, so I play a letter, then they play a letter, and uh, you, I think you're trying to get through all the letters. Really nice look to this one. I, I like that one. It's probably one of my favorites. Woo is a two-player trick-taking game. I haven't played this one, so I can't tell you about that. Boo, I quite liked. It's got uh, these ghost artwork. It, you're, how do I describe it? It's a two-player one again. You're trying, to, uh, you're trying to get the most of your color out and you're flipping um, other cards that are in play to change the colors. Nut, this was actually exclusive to the second pack, so I don't think you can buy this one. But it's one of my favorite ones. You've, um, you're, trying to get connections of the same color nuts um, and to get points. It's just very simple and I, I like that one. Hue is uh, you're building grids of colors and you've also, you kind of got vested interest in certain colors and you're trying to make them bigger. That one's quite good, a little bit hard to follow, but TKO is a two player game. I haven't played this one, so I can't tell you about it. Spy, this was an interesting idea where you don't need a table, you could, you're playing with the cards that are in your hand. Um, it's a bit of deduction to it. I'm not sure I loved it, but it's, a, it's neat to be able to have a game like that. You can maybe play on the train or, or in a queue or something. 
Jim was the one that I was most excited about. Really cute artwork, and it's a drafting game where you're collecting people to be on your team in, um, in like, gym class. Unfortunately, it was just way too chaotic when I played it, um, and didn't like that one at all, really, sadly. Uh, Bus, I haven't played, so I can't tell you about. And Dig is quite a cute one where you are dogs, and you're going to pick up and deliver bones that you collect, and I thought this one uh, played quite nicely. Um, so that, uh, the, that, those are the Paco games, good travel games. Um, and I, I tend to sort of throw one in the bag occasionally when I'm going out. Rolf, this is a party game that I just got from Kickstarter. I saw beer and board games um, play this. They seem to have a lot of fun with it. Played it last night for the first time. Didn't go over brilliantly, but there are a lot of different ways to play it. Uh, basically, someone reads out a famous saying such as, uh, you make me feel like a natural, and the obvious word is woman, everyone else has to shout out a word as quickly as possible that begins with the same first letter, so begins with W. So instead of saying, you make me feel like a natural woman, you say, you make me feel like a natural watermelon. And then the judge, who has read out the card, picks their favourite one. I think it has the potential to be quite funny, but it just didn't fully work for us last night. We will see if, uh, if it st sticks around. Not sure on that. This is Under the Mask, the Time Stories uh, scenario. I've never played it, it's an Egyptian theme. And then same goes for Expedition Endurance. Quite looking forward to playing this one because you're in a boat on the North Pole and it's based on historical uh, voyage. So um, yeah, looking forward to those, but can't tell you any more than that. And obviously I won't be keeping them once I've played them because you can only play them once. Um, Hide and Speak, I was just sent this. This is a party game inspired by a game that they played on the Jimmy Fallon show where you have to talk, sort of ramble, and sneak in some words that you've been assigned and then the other player has to, or other players have to guess which word you sneaked in. So I like the idea of it but I haven't tried it yet to know whether I actually like it. Right, then we've got a whole collection of Rory Story Cubes and these are really to play untold. I, I don't, uh, haven't played Rory Story Cubes on their own although I'd like to try some uh, ways to do it. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of different sets. Uh, the the basic one, Voyages, Fantasia, Actions, and then a bunch of the little packs. Um, I really like the Medicine one just because I like those kind of stories. And then I've got a couple of metagame packs here that um, uh, Quinn's actually gave me from Shut Up and Sit Down. Um, I haven't actually played the metagame yet so I can't uh, tell you on that. They're, they're kind of on my to play thing. Oh, and I've also got a game up here called Fitzit. This is quite a small little game from Game Right. Um, I don't know if I love this one. I played it waiting for a meal at Pizza Express at UK Games Expo uh, last year. It's got sort of um, descriptions such as comes in a box, fits in a blender, often makes people laugh, and you're creating these rows, and every time you add a card to a row, you have to then say something else that fits in with all of those criteria. So it's kind of interesting. Um, but uh, I don't know, I found that it was almost a bit too hard maybe and that people were inclined to say things that didn't really fit. Uh, two Rooms and a Boom. This I love this game because it's so different. It's a big group game, a massive group game that you can play with like 30 people and you're playing across two different rooms and the theme is that there's like a terrorist, a bomber, they're trying to kill the president. They want to end the game in the same room as the president. Nobody necessarily knows on who's each other's team, but you can reveal your cards to each other, you can, you can lie to people, and it's all about moving people back between the rooms, and, uh, and there's loads of different hidden roles. I've had some really good games of this and some other less good, um, but I'm really looking forward to try it again. I'm definitely, I think I'll probably keep that for a long, long time because I, I see a real potential in it. Password Express, this is a party game that I picked up at Essen. This one's... Um, quite challenging. You've got uh, letters that you need to uh, fit into certain words and then you've got categories and then you kind of have to shout out, your team has to shout out a word, um, maybe like a type of food that begins with M, um, but then you have to maybe try and find one with the second letter is M or the third letter is M and you're trying to fill up the grid and you're going back and forth with the teams and people have found it really hard and frustrating but it packs quite a lot of interesting game into a box and so I'm keeping it for now. Um, this is a box of micro machines that I got my mum to bring me. I used to have micro machines as a kid um, and 
I thought they'd be good for some games that have like uh, little cars in. So I've got loads of different things like that. So if any of my cars, uh, if any of my games uh, have like wooden or plastic cars in, then micro machines are like a good replacement. So uh, I need to deal with that. Um, this is Banana Grams. This is one of my only sort of mass market games that I can put up with. We used to, before I really got into games, we bought this one. We were on going on holiday and there was like a Smith's and they were selling this and it's like, you know, they get you to buy it because it looks like a banana. And, and then we played it and it's fun. It's like, um, you know, it's a speed word building game and you're building these grids. It's not perfect, but I, I've enjoyed it. Um, I think it's a cool game. Speaking of word games, this is Word Domination. I backed this on Kickstarter. It's got an area control thing to it. It's from um, Tim Fowers' company. Um, you are trying, you, when you build a word, you put cubes on the letters that you've used. And then if you use those letters again, you win those letters and that, their points. But then other people can try and use the same letters to try and oust you off there. Um, very simple, kind of a really good replacement to Scrabble. Um, yeah, I recommend that one. Harvest Dice, uh, just get, got this one from Grey Fox Games. This is a roll and write game, and I've really enjoyed this and serve a lot of my friends. It's, um, you're rolling some dice, and then you're picking which ones to use, and you've got red dice for tomatoes, orange dice for carrots, green for lettuce, and then you have to draw them on your little sheet, and it's about getting the things you want at the right time, making the right decisions. I, I still ultimately prefer Quinto as a uh, my favorite roll and write game, but I think this one's a nice alternative. A uh, decent sized box. Hardback, uh, this is the sequel or prequel to Paperback, which is a word uh, building, deck building game from Tim Fowers. I just got this from Kickstarter. I haven't played it yet, but I'm imagining that I'm gonna like it seeing as Tim Fowers is my favorite designer. This is also from him. All of his uh, boxes, uh, are, I love these box size. This is Burgle Brothers. This probably packs more game into a small box than any other game that I own. This is a really rich, thematic cooperative game about uh, doing a bank heist and uh, it's got a lovely exploration feel to it. It tells great stories. Uh, I, that's just an amazing game. And so this is paperback that I talked about before. This was in my top 10 couples games list. It, it's a deck building word game and uh, it looks like a, a book or on the shelf or um, books. And then this is the expansion that came with the hardback uh, Kickstarter. I can't quite fit all the sleeved cards into the paperback box. Um, I haven't tried the expansion yet. This is an uh, expansion to Colt Express, Marshals and Prisoners. I've also got the other expansion. I've actually lent Colt Express to my neighbor, uh, so I don't have it here, but it's a game that I like. It's a programming game of where you are all competing to rob the most from a train, and it's very chaotic. Um, you you program your actions, and people are shoot. Other people are shooting you and ruining all your plans. It's a lot of fun, though. I like it, and I like the uh, I like the expansions as well. Cash and Guns Team Spirit. Uh, I haven't quite got to Cash and Guns yet, but this is my favourite expansion for that game because it allows you to play in teams. I'll, I'll talk about Cash and Guns in a bit. Where Words, this was in my top 10 party games of last year. It's 20 questions, the hidden roll game, where one person knows what the word is and they're trying to throw the other players off whilst everyone's asking uh, questions. Works really nicely. What's it to you? This was a bit of a surprise hit uh, as a party game from Essen this year. It's from a Korean company, and you can really tell that because it's got some terrible words in it, but the idea is that you line up a bunch of words such as baseball, tree, adventure, shopping, something, chicken, and then one person is voting secretly on the order in which they prefer those things. Then everyone else has to vote and guess what their order would be. So you're trying to understand your friends again. And I love games like that. And I think this is actually one that's done it the best. I, there was a game called Felix I got at Essen and that was quite serious stuff, but it didn't have the same level of kind of discussion and chat. You want these types of games to really bring out a lot of conversation. And whilst this game's quite simple, and like I said, it's got some really weird words in it, for example, cement, um, you, it, it's a game that's had a lot of laughter for us. And um, yeah, definitely keeping this one for a long time. I think it's great for uh, playing with groups of friends. 
Sushi Go Party was in my top 10 Christmas gifts. This is a brilliant gateway hand drafting game where you're trying to eat the best meal of sushi. It's based on the original game Sushi Go, which was in my top 10 Christmas games. It's, uh, but this one has loads of variety. The artwork is incredible. I, I use this a lot as uh, if I'm playing with someone that's completely new to board games, this and Las Vegas are two that I use uh, all the time. Forbidden Island, this is in my uh, Monopoly video. Uh, this is a very simple cooperative game from Matt Leacock, the designer of Pandemic. It's about, there's, you're on an island that's flooding and you're trying to survive and get some treasures. Uh, in this tin, I hate tins by the way, um, there are also all the components to Forbidden Desert, his other cooperative game that comes in a tin. Um, this was back when I only had one bookcase and I was trying to cram everything into the same thing. Um, and that's a slightly more advanced cooperative game. I don't know if these ones will stick around forever. This one's a really good gateway cooperative game, but then so is Pandemic. So, um, I, and I ultimately prefer Pandemic, but it's nice to have a bit of variety and it's quite a small box. Kokoro Avenue of the Kodama. This was my number one couch game. This is based on Avenue, a game that I love from Essen a couple of years ago. It's a great um, kind of a roll and write game, except there's no rolling. You're drawing cards instead. It's a bingo game. This is from um, one of the designers, Christian Amundsen Osby, who did Escape Curse from, from, from the Temple and uh, some other games that I uh, enjoy. But so much frustration and thought into such a simple, quick game that you're all playing simultaneously. It's, uh, it's a blast, that one. Highly recommend that one. It, that one's gonna stay in my collection for a long time. And I've also kept the original Avenue. I slightly prefer the artwork to Avenue, but this one has whiteboards. For Sale, this is an amazing filler game, a simple card game. It's uh, an auction game. You're bidding on houses. I've got the yellow version, by the way, just because I prefer the artwork in that. So it's French. So I've just got a printout of English rules. Uh, you're bidding on uh, the best houses, trying to get them as cheaply as possible, and then you're selling them off. Um, and it's, it's it, it just plays so nicely. Uh, very similar. It, um, there's another game that I really love called High Society. Beyond Baker Street, I've done a review of this. This is an advancement on Hanabi. So uh, it's a cooperative game where you can't see the cards that are in your hands, but you can see everyone else's. And you're trying to give them clues and you're trying to beat Sherlock. You're trying to solve the case quicker. This one's maybe a little bit trickier. It's also got different levels to it, a nicer theme. Um, so that's why I've kept that one. Blank. This was uh, from the Creativity Hub, the people that made Untold. And what I like about this one is that you're creating your own game. And so uh, you start off with a few rules in the game. It plays a little bit like Uno. And then you're, every time someone wins, they get to write on a card and create a rule or change one of the cards. And so we're turning it into the kind of game that we love. And uh, that's so appealing. Um, so I'm looking forward to evolving that one even more. Um, I think that would be a great one for kids, really teach you about game design. Karuba. This one I've often felt I don't necessarily need, especially when I have Avenue or Kokoro, because it, it's quite similar in a much bigger box. This is from Rudiger Dorn, who made Las Vegas. Um, I love uh, some of his games. It's a bingo game where you are, um, you are trying to create paths to these temples to get the treasure quicker than everyone else. So there's a nice racing aspect to it against the other players. It, it is really enjoyable. So I, I don't know if, uh, if I will be keeping that one or not really. Serrano, this is one of my favorite party games that I never really play. Um, but what I love about it is that you're writing poems. So um, it gives you the, the, the rhyme scheme or um, gives you the, the end of the word that you have to rhyme with. And then it might give you a, I think it gives you a theme of what the poem you've got to write about. And then you're writing kind of love poetry, things like that. It's just hilarious with the right people. Um, and I think it's, uh, yeah, uh, I'm keeping that one for a long, long, long time. Spyfall, this is a, uh, a cool game where you, one person is the spy, they don't know the location that they're in, everyone else does know, and you're all asking each other questions to try and understand who's the spy, who really knows what the location is. A bit like fake artist, a bit like the chameleon. Um, when I first played this game, I, I was in love with it. I don't play it so much anymore, um, but I think it still has a place in my collection. 
Las Vegas. So this is such an unassuming box, an unassuming name. Even on the table, it doesn't look that good. But this is one of my all time favorite gateway games to show other people about board games. Uh, you are rolling dice and placing them on different casinos to try and make the most money. And you're trying to oust other people or be stronger than other people. Um, it's really competitive um, and yet so simple and there's decisions to it and it's different to any classic board game that people might have played and uh, I've I've found like for example um, our neighbors we played Las Vegas with them and they ended up buying it themselves so I think that's proof that it's uh, a great game. Patchwork is one of my favorite couples games in my top 10 couples video. This is a Tetris style puzzle laying thing where you're building a quilt and it's surprisingly competitive and thinky. It's an amazing game. I recommend that to anyone who wants to play two player games. Happy Salmon. This is uh, such a silly fun game. This is on my top 10 Christmas gifts. Great for kids, but also great for just anyone that wants a burst of energy in their game nights. I play these quite a lot and now I have the blue one, which allows me to play 12 players instead of six players. And it just makes it even more chaotic. And we were, uh, um, I was at a stag do um, a couple of months ago and we ended up playing Happy Salmon at like one in the morning and it was a blast. And um, Lost Cities, this is a classic two player game from Reiner Knizia. And um, I, this one's more of a recent get for me. Um, I haven't played it loads, but I enjoy the um, decisions in it. Uh, I think the box is maybe a tiny bit too big for what's just a deck of cards, but yeah, it's it's not one of my super favorite couples games, but I think it's a good one. Truth Bombs, this is designed by the YouTubers Dan and Phil. I talked about this in my top 10 party games of last year. It's a party game about writing things about the your friends, the other people you're playing the game with. It's not too mean though, um, and it creates a lot of laughter. I think it's uh, quite a clever little party game. Escape Curse, uh, no. <laughs> Escape from the Aliens and Outer Space. This is a team hidden movement game that I talked about in my hidden movement video. Love this one. You've got whiteboards. You are trying to, the good guys are trying to escape. The aliens are trying to catch them and turn them in the humans into aliens. It's a bit chaotic. It's maybe a bit imbalanced sometimes, but the experience is awesome. And the production from Osprey Games is also brilliant. Snake Oil. One of my favorite party games of all time. It's a p pitching or persuasion game where you are putting together two word cards in your hand and trying to sell that product to a customer. So the customer might be a caveman um, and you have to come up with something that they would want to buy out of these collection of words in your hand. I talked about this in my uh, Alternatives to Cards Against Humanity video. And this is my favorite one out of all of those persuasion games. And I have a few of them because I think it inspires the most creativity, the way you combine those words. And uh, I just so much laughter from this game. I think it's out of print, but um, yeah, I, I would recommend that game to anyone who likes party games. Space Alert. This is, I think the only game, uh, oh no, I've got code names from Vlada Shvatil. This is from Czech Games Edition. It's a, maybe one of the original real-time cooperative games. It's quite complicated in its rules. It took us a long time to learn it. And so I haven't revisited it that much because teaching it to a new player is, is gonna be quite tricky. It comes with a CD, with a soundtrack. And what's different about it is that you're programming your actions in real time. And then you can end up just completely screwing everything up. It's, it's a calamity game. Um, you're trying to, you basically got all these aliens after you and you're trying to control your spaceship. La Cosa Nostra I talked about in my favorite games of last year. It's a negotiation game with a mafia theme. It's quite an adult theme where you are um, building up businesses and you're maybe carrying out hits on other players and there's just so much bribery and, and blackmail in this game. It, it really fit, fits its theme. I, I'm gonna keep that for a long time. Space Alert, I'm less sure I'll keep forever because of the rules and uh, Escape and Snake Oil definitely keeping for a long time. Flashpoint Fire Rescue is a cooperative game about putting out fires and trying to rescue people. It's a little bit similar to Pandemic. I've always quite enjoyed this, but it has a little bit too much admin for my like. It, between each round, there's just a lot of extra things you have to do that I wouldn't say are immediately obvious or intuitive. Um, 
And I've got a lot of expansions for this, so I'm loath to get rid of it, but I'm not sure it's, it's my favorite. I feel like it could be replaced. This is one of the expansions, the Extreme Danger one. Corporate America, this is a negotiation game about, uh, it's got a really funny theme to it. You're all corporations in America, and there's also a presidential election, um, and you're basically trying to buy people off and make the most money. Um, it's, uh, it goes on a little bit too long, but it's quite, in terms of the system, it's quite streamlined. I know that there's a new version that I'd like to try, um, because I have had a lot of fun with this. It just maybe outstays its welcome a tiny bit. Harbin Goot, this is a game I've heard lots of good things about. I only got this very recently in a trade, um, so I've never played it, but it, it's a stock trading game where you share a hand of cards with a player to your left and your right, um, and that sounds really interesting. So um, I'm looking forward to trying that one. The Networks, this is a game about running a TV network. I really like that theme because I've worked in TV. Um, and. It's a card game and you're trying to collect genres, you're trying to put them in at the right time. It's got some nice thematic touches to it. I'm not sure it's one of my favorites. I'm waiting for the expansion to come out to see if that can reignite my interest in this one. Liberatores, this is a social deduction game that I got from Essen. I've played this a couple of times. I've enjoyed it, I don't know if I love it, and it's a hard one to put my finger on why. It's a little bit more complicated than your average Avalon, that kind of thing, there's points you're, you're collecting for a certain faction, there's three different factions you can be in this game. So it's quite clever, but I don't know that that translates into fun, uh, so just need to confirm that really, not sure it's gonna stick around. Pandemic Iberia, I talk about in my top 10 Christmas gifts. I love Pandemic, the original game, and this is Almost a cleverer version, got some interesting twists on it. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a fun alternative to Pandemic. Kremlin, this is a game that I've had for many years and I'm still yet to play, but it's a game that I am desperately trying to get played very, very soon. I've, I've trying to stick something in the calendar, get a gr good group together. It's a negotiation game about being the power behind Russian politics. And, and there's things like you're killing off people or they're getting sent to gulags and stuff like that. Um, I like the idea of it, but it's, it's based on a, um, an old game from the 80s, so I don't know if the, uh, the gameplay will necessarily hold up. We'll see. Tapple is a... It's, I use it as kind of an entry game almost. We used to run a party games night and this was a good one to just have out on the table and you can just jump straight into it. It's got this plastic thing that has letters on it and it's a timer and then you're given a category such as pizza toppings and then you say okay cheese C and you push down C so then nobody else can say C and then you're going around and you've got to keep coming up with pizza toppings and then people will drop out. It, it works nicely and the machine, oh the box is terrible, I'm just going to put that on the floor. Um, yeah the box is falling apart but it's, uh, it's a fun game. Colorbrain, this I talked about in my couch games. It's a trivia game where all the answers are colors. It's got some interesting trivia game twists. Um, yeah, I like this one. I think when I've used up all the questions, I don't really know um, where it will go, but I guess that's true for all trivia games. Sons of Anarchy, Men of Mayhem. I've done a full review of this, one of the first games I reviewed. I love this negotiation game, but there's also worker placement. You're trying to make the most money by selling drugs and um, trying to extort businesses and you're getting into fights with other motorcycle gangs. The, this company, Gale Force 9, make great thematic games, often licensed games. If you don't like the TV show Sons of Anarchy or have never seen it, don't let that be a reason not to try this game. The theme is barely there. It's just about being criminals, really. Um, and this one you can get pretty cheaply. I'd recommend trying this out if you like the sound of that one at all. It's highly underrated. Cash and Guns, this is a big group game, a little bit too complicated to call it a party game, where you have foam guns and you're pointing them at other players um, and you're trying to make the most cash. You're, you're splitting a, a, a loop, imagine like a Mexican standoff. And um, it's, it's fun theme. I, I much prefer it playing it in the team version, which is why I have that expansion team spirit. If I didn't have those expansions, I think that maybe I wouldn't have kept this game, but as it is, I, um, I really like it now. Homeland, this is also from Gale Force 9, based on the TV show Homeland, which uh, was a show that I loved. 
Um, this is a hidden traitor game, um, hidden roles. So some of you are good FBI agents and some of you are terrorists, just like uh, Brody. And um, you are, it's a little bit Battlestar Galactica style. It, it plays in maybe like an hour and a half. I've enjoyed this one when I played it. It's a little bit fiddly with the way you lay cards down, but um, the, it, it plays nicely. I just don't know if I need it. I don't know if it's amazing. I don't know if that one will stay around forever. But on the other hand, uh, also from Gale Force 9 is Spartacus, a game of blood and treachery based on the TV show. I've never seen that TV show, but I love this game. It's a negotiation game, very thematic. It's quite chaotic and quite, there's a little bit of take that to it, but you are trying to get the most influence and you're hiring gladiators and you're getting all these weapons and you are sending those gladiators into the ring and um, fighting it out with other people's gladiators. But there's also a lot of kind of backstabbing and stuff like that. It's really nice. It, it's quite a long game, but it's a game that I've had loads of good times with. Um, 878 Vikings Invasion of England. This is a war game from Academy Games. It's a team game, two versus two. I uh, talk about it in my top 20 games of last year. I really uh, enjoy the system that this game is from, and so this is the one that I've kept because it's the, the nicest theme and production for me. Pandemic Legacy Season 1. If you haven't seen it, I've done a song about this game, so please listen to that if you, or go and watch the video for that if you haven't. Um, I very recently uh, finished Season 1, and I was a tiny bit disappointed by the end of it. Um, I f feel like maybe legacy games aren't for me long term. I found the admin of it every time you played, keeping up with, remembering all the new rules to be a little bit um, kind of stressful. I love the original Pandemic game, which is now in this box with the In The Lab expansion and on the Brink expansion. I, I really like the In The Lab expansion. So Pandemic is one of my favorite games of all time that I talk about in my top 10 couples games. Pandemic Legacy, we played two player and I felt it was too easy and then we switched to playing four characters, which is always a bit fiddly. And it, it, was, it was fun, I'm glad I did it, but um, it just wasn't the perfect experience. I wish I'd played it with four players. So then we've got the other draw and in here I keep kind of accessories. So I've got this um, travel dice tray from All Rolled Up. Um, which is really handy. I've got uh, a bunch of these trays from Play Tray. I really like these. These are for keeping bits on the table and they're made out of, the, it's kind of like a foam core but it's much harder and it's been sanded to make it look like stone. I'm going to talk about all this um, more in future accessory videos. I've got this uh, cool dice tray from Custom Dice Box uh, with Timmy printed on, uh, printed on it which is uh, awesome. Uh, this dice tower is from Harp corpse um, and it's really nice. It's got a nice felt lining. I've got a whole bunch of these dice boxes uh, from um, DV Giocchi. Um, I really like these for keeping components in. I've got so many of these. Um, they're just really useful. I prefer them to plastic bags. I've got a bunch of metal coins um, and some uh, stuff from Meeple Source. These are for Dead of Winter. Uh, this is a games tray thing, which is a bit similar to the um, uh, the geek box. I've got these card holders that I don't really use. I might end up getting rid of those. Um, just I thought they would be really useful. I got them ages ago, and I just don't really use them. Right, uh, let's finish up then with the last two shelves. We... Right, the last two shelves, starting with letters from Whitechapel, which I talked about in my hidden movement video. It's a hidden movement game where one person is Jack the Ripper, they have killed these people, they're trying to escape through Whitechapel. One of the reasons I love that is because I used to live in Whitechapel and, and still live nearby, um, and I like that theme. It's a streamlined game, really. It's, it's a simple game, uh, but so challenging for both sides. Um, it's quite long, uh, that's I think the only downside to it. And there is Whitehall now, but I, I, I think I still might prefer this one. It's very, um, it, there's not much luck in that game. Nothing personal. This is one of my favorite games. And I feel like I've said this a hundred times, but this is another negotiation game and it's really rich and thematic. You are controlling mafia, the mafia family. There's a hierarchy and you're placing influence on them. And you're, there's so much bribery and backstabbing in this game. It has amazing components. 
but I think this is my favorite negotiation game. There's always an opportunity to spend a bit of money. You can pay to re-roll dice in this game. You can, there's just so many bits and I've also got the expansions for them. It's, um, I, I absolutely love it. With the right people, this uh, is, is great. So um, yeah, I'll be keeping that for a long time. One of my favorite games. Ugh. Right, uh, Black Orchestra. This is a cooperative game about trying to kill Hitler. So you're all working together as um, resistance people, um, trying to put together a plan, a plot to kill him. So you've got to collect together certain items and then have him in the right place at the right time. It's quite different to most cooperative games. Uh, often they can feel a bit like Pandemic and this is very different to that. I found that it is quite luck heavy. There's a lot of event cards that can really screw you over. Um, I enjoy the theme of it. I don't know if it's one that I'll keep wanting to play again and again. And of course, some people uh, just find the theme a bit too, um, too much of a turn off. Battlestar Galactica, the board game. This is one of my all time favorite, rich thematic storytelling games. And it's also got a hidden traitor aspect. I, can't, I think I started watching the series as I got this game or maybe around the same time and I ended up loving the series and, uh, and the story for that. But um, uh, what I like is that you're on a spaceship and some of you are Cylons, hidden traitors. You're trying to sabotage everyone else, but you're doing it over the span of a three hour game or more. Um, it takes a bit too long, but there's so much theme to it. And I like that spread out, um, th that traitor thing. You don't, it's not all kind of intense. You, it, I don't necessarily find it as challenging to bluff in this game as in maybe um, Resistance. So yeah, great game and I've got all the expansions in there with a broken token insert. Santorini, this is, uh, I talked about my couples that play together video. This is a wonderful abstract game. It looks amazing on the table. It, you're building these plastic uh, buildings that look like the island of Santorini and everyone's got a god power that gives them a really special ability for that game that makes every game a different puzzle to solve. It's quite challenging and uh, I love playing it two player. And so that's one for a, a long collection. I mean, it's a, a real collector's item, I think, Santorini. This is Champions of Midgard. This is the Kickstarter big box that came with the expansions. I haven't actually tried the expansions yet, I did a full review of Champions of Midgard. It's a worker placement game about being Vikings, uh, but you're trying to kill fantasy creatures and be get the most glory. Um, it's got an interesting dice mechanism that makes it quite approachable, I think. So yeah, that's uh, the big box. And I've got an awesome uh, foam core insert from insert here in there to keep all the bits in for that. Um, uh, got it from Top Shelf Gamer. Um, this is Fury of Dracula. This is another hidden movement game that I talked about on my hidden movement list. This one is long and intense. It has lots of thematic touches to it. One of you is Dracula, everyone else are vampire hunters trying to kill him. And so there's some combat to it, which is different to other hidden movement games. Um, I think it tells a great story. I don't know if I will in sort of two years time, if I've forgotten the rules, it's so complicated that I might sort of come back to it and be like, no, I can't, I can't put up with this. But I do think it's a fun game. Right, last shelf, Mysterium. This is a wonderful game um, that I think does an incredible job of showing how different and exciting board games can be to new audiences. It's a cooperative game where one person is a ghost and they are trying to communicate who killed them and how they were killed and where they were killed to the other players. But the way they're doing that is by giving them art cards that are like Dixit style surreal art cards. So you're communicating in this peculiar way and that's fascinating to me. And then the other players are discussing what this communication means. It's got incredible components. Um, I know that a lot of people find it um, it can be a divisive game, but for me, I absolutely love it. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely going to stay in my collection a long time, that one. This is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, the basically the second box with some Jack the Ripper cases and other stuff. 
Um, I've only played one case in this, but it was great. It's just like what you'd expect from Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Obviously for me, I want to keep these types of games forever, but once you've played them, they're sort of done. So uh, I don't know if I will, you know, if they keep releasing them, whether I will keep uh, just keeping them or whether I'll sort of get rid of them. Deception, uh, Murder in Hong Kong. This is the expansion box. Um, undercover allies. I haven't actually played with any of the new roles, but th this was the game, um, this was my second ever board game review, so you can go check that out. It's a social deduction game that I think is a bit easier to get into um, and, and lends itself to more conversation in the group, but basically one person has killed someone and used a certain weapon and the other players are trying to work out who it is and what they used. The only thing I find with it is for a party game or a big group game, it's kind of a big box and it, it needs a big table. You can't just kind of play it around a coffee table. Why isn't it otherwise? This is one I hunted out on eBay. It's similar to Boulder Dash, uh, but in this game you are writing philosoph philosophical sayings uh, or you're ending them. So for example, it might say, it's not easy to put pants on or there's an old Egyptian saying and then you just have to write something and you're trying to get everyone else to believe that what you wrote is real. And it's just full of nonsense and you write nonsense and it's, it's just a funny game. And in exactly the same vein is Famous Last Lines. This is probably my favorite one of these types of games in which I've got four, um, Ex Libris, Border Dash, Wise and Otherwise and this. Uh, in this one, you're writing the last lines to movies, famous movies that you would have heard of. And, but often the last line is something completely forgettable um, and that you would never recognize. And it's so much fun trying to write, trying to use what you know about those films to write something that's believable. Um, yeah, I uh, really enjoy that one. Haven't played it in a while, I need to, but um, definitely keeping that one for a long time. Plucking Pears. This is a party game where you're trying to match up with other people. You're trying to think like everyone else. So there's a bunch of pictures and you have to pair them up in your head as to, you know, why you might think that a cat connects to a dog, but someone else might think that a dog connects to a cow or, you know, there's a, a whole bunch of things. Um, and I think it lends itself to some fun kind of arguments afterwards. Why on earth did you think, you know, and sometimes you're left out in the cold whilst everyone else kind of thinks together and you're just completely separate. It's a massive box, I think, which lets it down. There's hardly anything in here. Um, but uh, I think it's fun. I need to try this one again. I don't know if it's a long-term keeper. I also in here have got uh, Pictomania, which is a fun drawing game. Uh, fast paced that I talked about in my Pictionary games video, and a game called Encore, which is a singing game uh, where you are playing on teams and it gives you a word such as love, and you then have to sing a song with the word love in, and then the other team have to sing a song with love, and you go back and forth until somebody passes and they can't think of anything. It's kind of fun, but it's also quite challenging, and a lot of people don't want to play a game where you have to sing, which I understand. Um, Coconuts, it seems to be the last game. This I talk about in my Dexterity Games video. I played this just the other day. I was kind of wanting to confirm in my head whether I want to keep it and decided to. It's a game where you're flicking uh, plastic coconuts into these plastic cups. So imagine a bit like beer pong, you're trying to get something into a cup and you've got these robotic uh, monkeys, I've got one here, uh, to flick in and it's silly. It would be great for kids but it's also great for adults too, and um, I like it. So that is, those are all the board games, uh, but before I go, I've got a few play mats to show you, so I, I thought I'd do this, I keep them down the side. So um, this is for Celestia. Uh, I'm not gonna get it out, because it takes me forever to roll up. This one's a nice one, not necess necessarily vital, but um, a good one. And this is a felt that I use to put on tables, because we play a lot in pubs. Uh, my friend Neil got me this. Um, and it's just good to protect games from horrible sticky pub tables. Then I've got the Wits and Wages Vegas mat, which I talked about in my uh, party games of last year. Really love that um, way to play Wits and Wages. Uh, this is the Champions of Midgard uh, play mat, which I haven't even used yet, so I'm a bit embarrassed by that, but there's something about having a play mat on a Kickstarter add-on that is tempting, and that's also where this one is from. This is from the uh, Vikings game that I talked about before. 
Uh, I like it for this one. It, it makes the game sort of much grander and, uh, but it probably doesn't fit on my table. This is for Colt Express. Um, it makes it a bit more thematic, the whole scenario that you're playing with. Concept, this is quite a useful one to have a play map for because it makes the board a lot more visible. Um, and you can you could play it on the floor um, and uh, I also tempted to try a variant of concept where you play on teams a bit like word slam with two different boards uh, but I haven't got around to that uh, this is a play map for word domination the word game that I talked about before and finally uh, a play map for camel up which uh, is the betting racing game with camels that's it, that's my entire board game in four parts. Thank you to everyone that has made it this far. Let me know what games you think I absolutely should have in my collection based on the ones that I already own. All the ones that you're surprised I still keep that I should actually just get rid of. Thank you so much for watching, bye.